I want to show you an expression that contains a complex fraction, this expression right here. Notice that here's a fraction with a fraction in its denominator, so this is a complex fraction. This expression over here is called a continued fraction because it continues on in the same manner that it starts right here forever. So you can see they look pretty similar, but this presents a problem for us because how are we going to get down to the bottom of this thing to work our way back up to do the addition? When I look at this expression right here, it might look a little complicated, but I know I can start here with 1 plus 1 is 2. Then I have 1 plus 1 half. That's not too bad. The reciprocal of that, whatever I get, I'll add it to 1. So I know what to do right here, but in this case, this goes on forever in this direction. I can't go to the bottom of this and work my way back up. So there is a way to get an idea of where this thing is going as these dots show that we go on forever in that direction. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to draw a couple things on the board, come back here, and then we'll see what we can do with this expression. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've taken this expression right here and written these smaller expressions to get an idea of what it looks like as I continue down this path right here. So I can see here this problem is pretty simple to work. I'll just start down here and add 1 and 1 and get 2. So this is the same as 1 plus 1 half. Well, 1 is 2 halves plus 1 half, that's 3 halves. Okay, so I can see that that's pretty easy to do. Now I want to simplify this expression. Well, when I look at it, um, I have 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. Well, that's this right here. You see this expression right here appears in this expression. So I know that this is 3 halves, which means that I can simplify my work a little bit. 1 plus 1 over... 3 halves. Well, dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds, or I can just say the reciprocal of 3 halves. In any case, that comes out to be 2 thirds. 1 plus 2 thirds. So now I have 3 thirds plus 2 thirds. That will give me 5 thirds. And so I look at this expression here that I've just simplified, and I see that it's this expression right here. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. So this expression right here is the same as this expression, which means it must be equal to 5 thirds. So that means I have 1 plus 1 over 5 thirds. So same kind of looking expression as this, but now I have 5 thirds instead of 3 halves. Well, the reciprocal of 5 thirds is 3 fifths. So 1 plus 3 fifths. And then I have 5 fifths plus 3 fifths is equal to 8 fifths. Now, I don't know, are these numbers here looking familiar to you? Let's go down one more line right here. It'll be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over. Let's see, I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. I'm just counting the number of fraction bars I have. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, this expression right here, again, shows up as this expression. So it must be equal to 8 fifths. So I have 1 plus 1 over 8 fifths, and that's 1 plus 5 eighths, and 8 eighths plus 5 eighths is 13 eighths. Now I'm going to ask you again, does this look like it's familiar to you? Well, let's look back to the Fibonacci sequence. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, dot, dot, dot. And you can see that 3 halves is the ratio of these two Fibonacci numbers, 5 thirds the ratio of the next two, 8 fifths the ratio of the next two, 13 eighths the ratio of the next two, I don't even have to write all this out. Whatever that one is, I know that the next number in this sequence is going to be 21 over 13. So it turns out that simplifying this complex fraction right here, as we start making this little sequence of numbers, they turn out to be Fibonacci numbers, and each one of these expressions in this series of expressions turns out to be the ratio of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So if we knew where this ratio was going, we would know what the answer to this question is right here. What is, the, what, what is this when we simplify it completely? 
Well, it's whatever we get when we go down this sequence forever and just keep going. Turns out that it does actually go towards a very special number called the golden ratio. We need a little bit more work with square roots to show that, but we'll do that later on in the course. For right now, all I want you to see is that this is a sequence of ratios of consecutive Fibonacci numbers, and it gives us a way to start the simplification process which with this expression right here, which seemed impossible the first time we saw it.